spring chicken. We may be so inflamed with heavenly desire that with minds made pure we may obtain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to Him at all ages. To him be glory and power in every age and forever. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O oh God, through your Son you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in this pastoral feast we may so burn with heavenly desire that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting light through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Rejoice now, heavenly host and court of angels, and let your trumpet shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round See 
When wicked lasses put to flight, and sin is washed away, it restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred, it brings peace and comfort. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice, the offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star, who knows no setting, find it story of creation. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the water. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land be. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called sea. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. 
And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the realm of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters with every living creature that moved, and every plant with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird that you find. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the sea, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant that will lead seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree the seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day, and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Remember us in our Lord's day. 
more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature. Grant that he may share the divine life with him who humbles himself to share our humanity. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Israel's deliverance in the Red Sea. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there was no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us? bringing us out of Egypt. Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians, whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff, and stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh, and all his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, whom I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took to place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, and so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all the Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord, in the pillar of fire and cloud, looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He caused their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord passed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained.
while the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing, and Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has drank gloriously. Horse and rider, he has thrown into the sea.
offered freely to all. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come by and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make you with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord where he may be found. Call upon him when he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, that he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your way, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and does not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it.
redeemed by the power of your word, and you renew the earth by your spirit. Give now the water of life to those who thirst for you, that they may bring forth abundant fruit in your glorious name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A new heart and a new spirit. Say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean for all from all your uncleannesses and from all your idols you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone, and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you, and make you follow my statutes, and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors. And you shall be my people, and I will be your God.
gathering of God's people. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the land and gather the outcasts, and I will change their shame into praise and renown on all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home. At the time when I gather you, for I will make you renown and praise among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortune before your eyes, says the Lord. Let us pray. 
And so, here we are. Can everyone remember the day we entered Jerusalem? Do we remember the palms being waved in the air, cloaks thrown on the ground? We shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. It was a wonderful day. And then something turned. We saw Jesus captured, well, let's say arrested. Question moved from Pilate to Herod. And here we are. We read about him being nailed to the cross. He said, it is finished. We witnessed his body being wrapped and put in the tomb. And here we are. And as we heard earlier, this is the night. This is the night when God brought our ancestors, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and restored to grace and holiness. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victoriously from the grave. Can you hear the expectation? Listen, something's about to happen, but we just don't know because we're sitting in this part of Saturday where everyone thought Jesus dead. Think about that, that moment. Listen. So something is about to happen. So hold on to that. And so, dear friends in Christ, from time beyond memory, this most holy night has been kept as a baptismal vigil. For it is in baptism that we die to sin and rise to newness of life in Christ. Here we find rebirth in the spirit and set our minds on God's heavenly gifts. Let us ask God to bless this water, gift of his hand and sign of our baptism and to keep us faithful to the new life we have received. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Oh, wherein the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you. By the power of your Holy Spirit, that we who use it in faith may be ever reminded.
commanded of our baptism through the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism and to his death, and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now with our Lenten observance is ended, now that it has ended, the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and all his works, and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Would you please stand? Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, the Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayer? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Father's resurrection, stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, that we being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from the book of Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our whole self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Ronnie. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with, with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloth by themselves, then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Without suffering and without reproach, let us 
pray to the Lord. Lord, I Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves to one another and all our life to Christ our God. To the name of the Lord our God. O Lord our God, accept the prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious unto our souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. want to say welcome to um, everyone. Um, if it's your first time, welcome. Um, and also want to bring to your attention the Bishop's Easter message was recorded here at Trinity. So you may want to um, watch that. It's on the YouTube channel. He came down this week. Uh, there was a surprise call in the wee hours of the morning. Um, <laughs> but um, it was a wonderful message and um, it was delightful to have that impromptu visit. So give it a um, listen. It's a wonderful, wonderful message. And with that, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
sacrifice for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Yeah. 